punch bit. They look like they've all been they're all spread out looking in their own little areas for any insects or any seeds. There's the woodpecker straight ahead. I don't know if you can be able to get in from here. There's move. There is a crested bog. It's just to the left of the impot. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Not sticking around today. Cool. Let's see if we can maybe catch up with the draft then. Keep a look out for the woodpecker still. Let's see how we go with it. <laughs> the birds are just not being helpful this afternoon. Just as we turn around the trees, we're going to just sitting just on the fork okay. of the branch there. Off. He's on the next tree, next tree over. Beautiful red head of the male, females have the black head, or partly black head. He's flown off again, hey? Yeah. I think I heard the other the female actually knocking somewhere down to our left when we were parked there watching the giraffe. Speaking of giraffe, there's one there. Where did the others go? Dark female, actually. Keeping a watch on the youngster. The youngster's probably just about a year old, I think. Looked quite tall.
just gonna make her way over to the youngster. They all look like young females. There are two at the back and the older female. Possibly her offspring from other years. Possibly unrelated, it's difficult to say. I'm just gonna, is it gonna be better if I just move into the shade by the side? Mm -hmm. See if I can do that. I just meet in the middle somewhere. I think the baby just was continuing to feed and didn't realise the adults had walked away so far. Now, if there was any predators around, she would actually encourage the youngster in between her legs so she could protect with a kick. And giraffes can kill lions with just one kick. There has been, on the odd occasion, giraffes killing keepers in the zoos. You don't really hear of giraffes killing people in the wild. You don't really get that close to them. But uh, there's just been one occasion where a giraffe killed a keeper. I think there was the second one fairly recently. They've got a very, very powerful kick. I'm just going to move again just over. Okay. Yeah, she's looking quite alert. Don't know if anything's come through this area. I know we were looking this morning. We're trying to follow up the leopard that was calling around the dam early morning or late in the evening. So I don't know if there's still a leopard around here. We were following up tracks around Chalapan area this morning. But what we have seen from the leopards, they don't stay in one place throughout the day. They do move around. You see them. I move forward a bit.
So a baby giraffe should start to be weaned for about six months old, but they can still take milk even a year later. Now I have seen young giraffe be quite far away from the parents, but it does depend on how many predators are in the area. And actually having on my old reserve a split escarpment, uh, we had the 600 meter high escarpment and on the upper escarpment there was no lions, on the lower escarpment there was, and you could actually see quite a big difference between the behaviour of the giraffes and especially with the small with the baby giraffes uh, definitely on the upper escarpment they would wander further away from the adults and uh, there was a good kilometer between a uh, baby giraffe and its mother and obviously it done it had done what this baby did had done carried on feeding and didn't realize the herd had moved off and we actually had uh, the two of them actually running towards each other it was quite a, a breathtaking moment when they when the two actually came together but uh, definitely in the on the lower escarpment where there was lions there's no way the, the baby would have been allowed to wander that far okay Hi Chicky, and welcome on board this afternoon. And you'd like to know how many vertebrae are in the giraffe's neck. It's the same as a human, it's seven. And that's why it's not as flexible as what you might think for a neck that size. If you think about a swan, they can make a nice S-shaped curve, and they have many, many tiny little vertebrae. Probably about, I think it's about 40 in the neck. And that's why they can make that bend in the neck. But obviously if the giraffe had that many vertebrae it wouldn't be as rigid and uh, they'd probably have a problem keeping it upright half the time. They're just much larger than ours. I don't know if I can I'll try and show you a bit later on. Try and show you the size difference between them. I think uh, I remember someone saying that owls had about 18 in the neck and again that just gives them a lot more movement of the neck. And it's hard to say why the neck's grown so long. There's a couple of theories, uh, one being trying to evolve <clears throat> to try and get to a place where other animals can't reach in the terms of food. Uh, obviously you can see the giraffes reaching quite high up into the trees and the only other animal that can really do that is elephants. But to keep the, the neck as long as it is, there has to con continue to be that, that pressure on them. Now if you have a look at the giraffes in front of us, you can see a giraffe sort of fairly almost at right angles, 90 degrees, there's actually all three of them now. And obviously it will depend on the vegetation that's in the area. And obviously where there's less trees, then it is going to give them an advantage. But I was reading quite an interesting paper, quite a while back now, that was suggesting maybe it's sexual selection. And the reason being, or the argument for it, was that the legs should have grown in proportion to the neck. And they haven't. So the argument was possibly that females were selecting males with longer necks, but then how do you explain the female necks? Unless they were also selected by the males, quite possibly.
It is quite an interesting paper, I must admit. So there's there's a couple of theories out there as to why they do have such a long neck. I've also heard you can tell the difference between a male and female depending on the height that they eat. Again, I've I don't believe that at all. Uh, from what I've observed, uh, females are supposed to eat at 45 degrees, and males with the head straight up. But I've seen males with the heads down. I've seen males with the heads at 90 degrees and 45 degrees, and I've seen females with the heads straight up. So. Yeah, that one to me doesn't really work. Just goes to show how well they can camouflage. I don't know which one are you on at the moment. Um, uh, two of them to the left. Under the tree. Uh, or the, the two out in the open. Two out in the open. Oh, okay. Someone asked me once which animal I find difficult to spot. And I definitely say the giraffe. For some reason, my eyes don't pick up their bodies in the bush too well. And I can be pretty close to a giraffe before I realise it's there. You possibly move again. Mm. When giraffes are born, the adults, or the, the mother, doesn't sit down. She actually remains standing, and the young is dropped from about two meters, and it sort of kickstarts the lungs. But they have to be two meters so that they can actually reach the mammary glands on the female, so they are able to drink the milk. Obviously, if they're any shorter, they would struggle, and it's. 
quite dangerous for, it takes quite a while for a giraffe to stand up and sit down, so it'd be quite dangerous for them in the area where there's predators. So if she was sitting down and trying to, to uh, feed her young, it would put them in quite an awkward position if there was a lion around. They will sit down and they'll sleep with their, their head up, or if it's a very deep sleep, they'll rest their head on the back. But giraffes don't sleep very often or for very long. They will sleep maybe 5 to 12 minutes at a time, 5 or 6 times a night. And they rest quite a lot when they chew the cud. Baby battling, have you got that one? <laughs> He's just battling to get though, a few of the leaves off the tree. <laughs> Hasn't quite worked out if it just wraps the tongue around the leaves and the branch and clamps the teeth down and pulls, the leaves are going to come off quite easily. Okay. Hi Nordstrom, welcome on board this afternoon. Hope you're well. And you'd just like to know how fast a giraffe can run. It's about 30 miles an hour. It's what, about 40... 25 kilometers an hour, I think it is. And they look very graceful, I must admit. It's quite a, a strange stance for a, for a giraffe. You don't often get a chance to see them running, but when you do, it's, it's almost like slow motion. It's really quite fascinating to watch. Interesting to keep a track of this little one. See if it also gets quite dark. So they tend to get older. Uh, they tend to get older. They tend to get darker as they get older. But the pattern and the the darkness can also get passed on. And so this female is quite dark. Probably one of the darkest females I've seen. Males tend to get darker, especially the, the dominant bulls. Which one are you on? Let's this one. Moving to Phnom Penh. Hey, just see how the baby walks. Check the legs. The two right and two left move together. Very unusual. For most animals it will be the front and then the back one.
put the, I don't know, are you on the two youngsters now? Yeah. You put the slightly larger one of maybe about two and a half, maybe three years old. So the lot, the, the fastest growth spurt is in the, in the first year. And it starts to trail off as they reach maturity about between six and eight years. <laughs> Shall we carry on? You good? I'll leave them to their own devices. layer on underneath the shoes. It's more for when it starts to get a bit cooler in about half an hour's time. No more smoke at the moment, which is a good sign. Although this time of year we will start to get more and more fires starting, especially as we go back into the rainy season with the lightning. So obviously all the vegetation has dried back, dried out, it's still fairly, fairly damp. There's still quite a lot of water around in the vegetation. It doesn't look like it at the moment. It will be hard if the price is spread.
Hi guys, welcome back again. Uh, sorry about that, apparently there was a bit of a problem with the microphone. Uh, so we just had to quick put to the damn camera quickly just to try and fix it. Hopefully it's not too noisy now. We've got some hyena tracks here. I think they were from this morning though. down towards Treehouse Down because we had that big herd of buffalo making their way down there and I wonder if they're going to be sitting in the same spot as we had a couple of days ago. It's quite interesting to see if they're doing the same routine. Apparently if there's plenty of food they won't move too far. They'll maybe do a small a few kilometers routine before they, they change the routine again. So it could be they're on a circuit quite intrigued to see if they are on that circuit. So I'm just going through Philemon's dip onto Philemon's Kutlai. Hello, if there's anybody that's just joined us, just tuned in. My name's Tara, I'm going to be guiding you for the next two and a half hours. And Herman's on camera with me this afternoon, hopefully getting some beautiful shots for you. And then we also have Mark in front of control with Afka. And they're going to be sending through any questions that you guys might have. And if you'd like to send them through, we can answer them in real time as we're driving. Anything that springs to mind, whether it's an animal that we've seen, or whether it's an animal that we haven't seen, it doesn't have to be an animal, it could be anything related to the nature. And if you do have any questions, just send them through to final control at safari.tv. the bachelor herd of Impala. We have a quick look at the Impala while they're here. I'm going to move off. I'm going to stay there. Do we have any new viewers here? And Impala are very easily recognisable with the, the dark brown on top of the bodies and the light brown underneath and then the cream under their belly. You can see there's a, three black stripes on their rump. Very characteristic of the Impala. Sorry Afka, can you send again? Hi Ruth, welcome on board this afternoon and you'd like to wish Janice in Louisiana a happy birthday and I'd also like to ha wish a happy birthday. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day <laughs> and also Mark and Herman and Afka would love to wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> so I hope you are having a good day and I wonder what animal you'd like to see today. Maybe Ruth can let us know, or uh, Janice if you can let us know, and we'll see if we can find it for you. But happy birthday from the whole team here at safari.tv. <laughs> Boys and thanks Brian for letting me know. There's a heat wave back in the UK. I might come back with a tan, you never know. <laughs> I 
Okay. Hi Kim, welcome on board. And I hope you're having some glorious sunshine as well where you are. Not too sure where you are from at the moment. It's uh you'd like to know or if you know of the leopards being active at night and resting during the day. So did I Kim <laughs> until I came here. <laughs> And uh, what's quite interesting is the leopards here do seem to move around during the day. Um, obviously it does depend on the temperatures of the day. If it's cooler, they'll tend to move around quite a lot more and they may even hunt during the day, depending on the circumstances. Uh, but they generally will rest during the day, but they may move. Um, what I have seen is if they are in an area, they may move to another area during the day. But again, it will, de will depend on circumstances. But generally cats shouldn't move too far. If you find them first thing in the morning, they shouldn't move too far away. Especially like lions, they'll tend to go and find shade. And if you sort of do a bit of a, a drive around the area, then you may find them under another bit of shade than what you left them. Because obviously the sun moves the shade will change but uh, as I say it's not always to have known lines to move a few kilometers now there's one of the buffaloes now and here's the we're just well off here they must have rested here during the day it looks like the herd's starting to get mobile now we're going into their late afternoon feed See if we can find a few nice individuals here. You all right there? Actually, if I move a bit further forward, we've got a few here as well. We're all busy grazing at the moment. I think they might be making their way down towards the dam unless they've just been from there. But I'd certainly say it's the same herd that we saw this morning just on Filament's cut line. Any stations on drive? I have a Schlambia Vignari north of Treehouse Dam. Sounds interesting. It sounds like there was possibly someone not too happy with someone else down there. It's possibly a bull. I wonder where our little one from this morning is. It's quite a young one this morning. As we were sat there, the whole herd got up and walked away, and this little one was left sleeping. And it was out for the count, completely and utterly. And probably a few minutes later, it woke up and realised everybody had gone. And there was one bull that had stayed behind just to keep keep a track of it and make sure it was okay.
I'm judging by this morning, I think the herb is roughly around 100, maybe a little bit more. Am I in the way? No, you're in the shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I say buffalo tend to become more active as it's cooler. Generally feeding in the morning, later on in the afternoon. And also at night where it's cooler, especially in the summer. You tend to get a lot more activity during the night. I'm gonna see if we can just make our way slowly because we're hearing I'm hearing a lot of noise ahead of us. Just want to see what's going on down there. I think here's a couple of individuals who are shouting at each other. I think we may have to see if we can cut to Gary. I think there's a slight problem with the clutch here and that's why I've jumped forward even though my foot is on the clutch. So if it's possible, if it's possible to cut to Gary, Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, it looks like we are going to have to try and bring Jigger out. Uh, it looks like the clutch, uh, the, the, I can't get the, the clutch plate to engage, so that's why we jolted forward even though my foot was on the clutch. We shouldn't have jolted forward like that and I'm struggling to get it into gear. So we're just uh, quickly making a plan and we're going to bring Jigger out and swap hopefully smoothly. <laughs> I'm not sure how uh, if we're going to be able to reverse out, we'll see if we can. But uh, for now we're going to sit with the buffalo. Unfortunately I can't get down to 
see, I can't really roll down and go further into the herd. Um, but we'll sit here and just watch them and hopefully uh, Mark will be able to get to us in a few minutes. Sorry, Afka, you're breaking up a little bit. Have you got a question? Okay, can we maybe try channel one? Ah, that's better. Awesome. Yeah, let's do the questions now. Okay, hi Ellen. Uh, welcome on board this afternoon. And you'd just like to know, first of all, what the horns are called across the top of the head, and that's, it's a boss. And when do they, they start getting, because you've, uh, you've actually seen calves with horns. And uh, I don't know if we, are we able to, oh, <laughs> that's very unhelpful. I don't know if we, are we able to get the calf in the background there? Yep. And uh, you can see the calf there. I'd guesstimate it's about three months old, maybe four months old, something like that. And you can see they've all, it's already got the two little horns there. So they start growing roughly around, I'm just trying to think now, it's probably around two, no, two, three, four months that they start, you can actually start to see them up here. And then a year old, you probably get them. About, is my hand in the shot? No. Oh, okay. No worries. So a few centimeters taller, about a year old. I think they'll start start growing sideways when they're about three or four, if I can remember rightly. But I will have to double check that. And you can see behind the youngster, you can see. There's an older, slightly older calf, but it's not an adult, it's a sub-adult at the moment. You can start to see it's already started curling out. But the boss will start to, to join together, so it takes quite a while, maybe a number of years, about six or seven years before it actually starts growing together. So I'd put the, the youngster that we were just discussing now, maybe about four, four years old. Maybe five. And they live up to about 18, 20, maybe 25 if they're lucky. I think they have been down to the dam to drink. There's a few actually coming up this way now. Yeah. I have another question. Hi, Anne and Laura from Pittsburgh, and they're fairly re fairly new viewers. So I'm glad to see you're still with us. I hope you're enjoying the buffalo this afternoon. And you'd like to know, uh, is it dangerous to drive around with the wild animals? Um, not really. And especially in the Savi Sands, it's been a game reserve for well over 100 years. So the animals in this area have gotten used to the vehicles. And they know what the vehicles are about and know that we won't harm them. The animals in Kruger... We'll also see the vehicles, but there are some areas of Kruger where you just can't get to, and those animals may never have seen a vehicle before in their lives. So those animals would probably move away from a vehicle rather than trying to... Got a buffalo right next to you there. <laughs> 
So rather than trying to fight something that they don't know about or they're not sure about and this thing could possibly harm them, they would rather move away. And that, that's the general case with, with most animals. If they've got an escape route and they're not sure about something, they'd rather move away from it because they, if they get injured, then it could be a life-threatening injury and that could be a, a serious problem for them. So they'd rather not attack something without really having to. So if those, those animals that have never seen vehicles, they're more likely just to move away. As I say, we're pretty much surrounded by a buffalo now. But you can see they're very relaxed, they're happy just grazing away. If we were on foot, then it may be a different matter. Uh, because on foot, you, you look differently to begin with. You're not part of a bigger entity. And they, they do react differently to when you're on foot. So if I was on foot now, being surrounded by buffalo, I'd definitely be finding the nearest tree to observe them from. Especially with all the, the youngsters around. But again, if, you've, if these animals are used to people on foot, you wouldn't get as big a reaction from them. And instances, have we have any instances where we've been in danger? Well, this is, obviously they, they are wild animals at the end of the day, and we can't fully predict what they'll do. As I say, all around us I'm checking, making sure there's no individuals that are unhappy with us being here. And we constantly check their behaviour. And that goes for any animal that we see, whether it be a leopard, a lion, an elephant, a rhino, even an impala. Um, impalas could also do you some damage if you corner an impala and the only way out is through you. So you constantly check the behaviour and constantly be aware of what's going on. So we try and... Okay, Afka. So we try and, uh, as I say, not interfere with their behaviour. We try and observe what they're doing rather than interfere. And as long as you respect the animals when you approach the animals, they know that you don't want to cause them any harm and they will usually continue what they're doing. On occasion they may change that behaviour and then we have to decide what to do, whether we stand still or whether we move away. That's what makes it quite exciting. Yeah, it sounds like the jigger is here. Okay, what I'm going to do, um, I think are we, I might be able to reverse out. Are you in reverse? No. Let's see if I can... No, because if you... It's in reverse now. I can maybe see if we can oh, reverse you out. You need to cut to Gary. Okay, guys, um, we're going to see if we can cut to Gary now. And uh, hopefully we'll be back with you in a few minutes. Let's see if we can reverse out the herd. Although I think we're pretty surrounded now. <laughs> So we'll hopefully be back with you as soon as possible, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
everybody, welcome back. Uh, not too sure how long that took us, but uh, it's certainly quite an interesting one. We were completely surrounded by buffalo. We had to bring the jigger alongside the, uh, the new vehicle and uh, move between the two just for safety reasons. And uh, as you saw Mark join me uh, at the front there and he was just making sure he was moving alongside the vehicles to make sure that he was still part of the vehicles. Had he have walked off into the herd, we would have had them running off completely. But uh, you can see they, they're still around, they're still relaxed, so all is good and well. So I think we had some buffalo questions uh, before we left you. <laughs> Any stations on Jonathan <laughs> of Inyari on Treehouse Dam Road. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, if we can go with the question. I just heard the question. We can't copy it. Yeah. <laughs> what are the white dots on the buffalo's face under the eyes? Okay, so I didn't. I still didn't copy who was asking the the question. I think the Sharon. And I'm not too sure who else, but uh, asking what are the white dots under the buffalo eyes. I was actually looking at them myself, and I've just noticed there's only there's a couple of individuals with them, but not all of the individuals have them. So I'm actually not too sure. I didn't. I don't know if they're actually having a preorbital gland. There'd be no reason for them to have a preorbital gland. They wouldn't mark territory with it. So maybe someone can help me out, uh, any of the viewers, if you've found anything on your travels. As I say, I was looking at them myself just now and thinking exactly the same thing. Yeah, while we're waiting, see if anyone can get back to us on that one. That's all right. Jade. Is that right from Jade? Jay. Jay. Hi, Jay. I hope you're well and uh, enjoying the buffaloes this afternoon on board Jigger now. And uh, you're saying you've heard the reputation of buffalo obviously being quite aggressive and uh, a little bit unpredictable. And you're just wanting to know was uh, were we a bit apprehensive obviously with the problems of the vehicle uh, well, I would say I've been looking at the herd ever since we've arrived and they're very very relaxed they're very chilled out they're not bothering too much and obviously with the other vehicle coming in um, they actually just as we were just moving the stuff as I say we were parked next to each other and we just moved the things over um, as quickly as possible and uh, they were they moved away from us because I think it was more just the movement around the vehicle, but they weren't too too bothered about us. What did happen? There was a buffalo, I think, close down to the dam. 
be quite a big old bull and I was hoping to try and find him. He's huge. And I think he was chasing a few of the, uh, the younger males possibly. And he caused, caused a bit of a stampede which did make us stop and look, I must admit. Because we wondered if they were coming for us. But it was actually a bull upsetting everyone and chasing after them. Um, but I think if it had been elephants I probably would have been a little bit more concerned. Um, just obviously the size of them. But with the with the herd being so relaxed, I wasn't too worried about them this time. And it's only when the buffalo are on their own are they a lot more aggressive. When they're part of a herd like this, they're a lot more stable. Standing by. Copy, thank you, Mark. So I was just listening to the radio to see if there's any updates. Okay, if we have another question. Welcome on board this afternoon. Oh, I've got the ox peckers in the road just, just bathing. And uh, Louise was just asking about the ox peckers on the back of the cow. And I think, if I remember rightly, there was a cow with an open wound on her side. Um, so, it, it, just asking, could it have been a, a TB scar? Um, possibly, but it could have also be from a, a lion attack. Uh, maybe a cut on the side that's uh, been opened and reopened by the oxpeckers and that's obviously why there is a bit of a, a debate as to whether oxpeckers are mutualistic or parasitic as they do cause harm uh, by keeping a wound open. Um, so as I say, it's, it, I didn't have a, a close enough look at it, I must admit, it was just a quick glance, so it could be either of those. That this herd are looking quite quite healthy actually. There's one or two individuals that look a little bit uh, on the rough side, but most of the individuals are actually quite looking quite healthy. And unfortunately, with buffalo, they actually carry us rather than uh, show signs of TB, um, and they unfortunately pass it on to other animals, um, such as lions. And unfortunately, that has given lions. Uh, quite a big problem in the area and especially down here in the south uh, in Kruger as well and unfortunately it was introduced by humans uh, by through their cattle and that's how it got into the buffalo to begin with and unfortunately it's a very sad truth I was trying to see if we could find that big buffalo bull say he was huge he had a huge dewlap he definitely looked like an old boy I just want to take a quick picture of this dust with the buffaloes walking through, it's just beautiful. Yes please.
thank you very much, Penny. Uh, apparently there's a couple of schools of thought, um, but no one's really too sure. I was going to say, I've never actually read anything about it, so that's possibly why I've, I've not noticed it before. But I'm just having a look around some other inv individuals, and it seems to be more individuals have it than I thought. Um, so it could be that it's on every, every individual and I've just not noticed it. Um, one school of thought possibly something to do keeping the flies away from the eyes. Um, another school of thought possibly for aggressive maybe assinuating the eyes a lot more. So no one seems to be really too sure. Don't, Penny seems to think that she doesn't know of any research that's been done. As I say, I certainly haven't heard of anything. Um, I was thinking, I wonder if it is a gland, but it just doesn't make sense to me because they don't mark territory. Uh, okay. They don't hold a territory, they just have home ranges. Even the buffalo bulls don't mark territory, they're non-territorial. So thanks for that Penny, and uh, if anybody else knows of any reason why. I'll check these two. We've got two buffaloes sparring here. Stop looking. Come back this way. <laughs> and buffalo herds will have subfamilies just like the elephant, but uh, they will congregate together. There we go, there's somebody practicing mating at the back there. I don't Music? know if you can see it. Oh, sure, no, I can't. <laughs> Okay. I just jumped down now. But um, you'll also get pathfinders in each of the small family units. And these pathfinders don't necessarily need to be the most dominant, they can be sub adults. And they'll go in, in front of the herd looking for the best grazing. And the rest of the herd will follow where they've gone. And depending on how big the herd is, then you may get some individuals taking that lead and the normal pathfinders for the family groups will drop back. So you have the pathfinders going up ahead and you have the dominant cows following, getting to the better grazing areas and they become more dominant as they have more, well, they have a calf so obviously they need to get the best grazing. Check this little one here. <laughs> He's charging it. <laughs> Having a mad half hour. Well, this has quite a lot of excess energy today. And there goes another one. <laughs> oh, we have someone trying to mate here. And unfortunately, he's got the wrong sex.
Mm -hmm. So actually it's amazing to see so much activity from Buffalo. This is probably the first time I've seen as much activity as what we're having here. These youngsters playing. And obviously with it getting cooler, it's now time to and run off some of that energy they've been storing for the rest of the day comfortable. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. You're going to be a feisty one when he's older. And I think he's realised he's lost his mum. Now you may find it odd a young bull trying to uh, mount another young bull, but it's actually it's, they need to practice. Johnny Gag? Oh, here's the old bull to our right. Uh, might be a little bit later on. I'm just with the Shalambia Vinyari uh, junction with Filaments Cut Line and Shambam Road now. Shambam Road, sorry. <clears throat> uh, just stand by for me. Just want to see if we can see this beautiful big bull. Yeah, oh, there he is. It's this one. I think it was this one, yeah. No, it wasn't him. He had a bigger jew lap than that. No. I think I saw him. Some beautiful big bulls here. There's another one a bit further back, actually. It's just in the shot, but he's quite off in the distance now. As I say, the young bulls will practice mounting barriers. It's going through there. Just, he's going to be coming into the shop shortly. There he is. There. He is. Yeah, he's big. Okay, I think uh, if there's another buffalo question. Hi, Julie. Welcome on board this afternoon. And you'd like to know. Uh, well, you've seen them chewing quite a lot. Do they chew the cud like cows? And that's exactly what they're doing. Just like cows, they have a four-chambered stomach. And they, when it gets to the, the hot part of the day, they'll find somewhere to go and rest and relax. And they'll sit down either in the mud or in the water or in the shade. And they'll chew the cud and pass the time until it's ready to move around and start grazing again like you can see the herd doing. It's just incredible. I've never seen so many buffalo in my life. I think this is a good 150, eh? Mm, at least, eh? At least. Uh, we're talking huge. about two, three hundred, I would think. Oh, sure. I've always wanted to see a large herd, and this is probably the first time I've really... I mean, 
we've obviously seen this herd before, but we've never really comprehended how big a herd this is. But with them all just crossing the road, and we've still got buffalo behind us, they're all in front of us. There's some that are standing watching us. It really is incredible. And as I say, they're a lot more stable than single males. Single males tend to be a lot more aggressive, probably because they're older. Um, and also, they get sort of set in their own ways. They, you can get a small group of, of old males. We call them dugger boys because of the mud. It's the Zulu word for mud. And they go to the softer vegetation, which is close to rivers. And obviously, a lot of mud is around there and they cave themselves, but they can be a little bit more uh, aggressive by nature. There we go, we've got the two, two sparring again there. And obviously you saw the youngsters also copying it and they start sparring at a very young age. And there's still more buffalo coming. Yeah. <laughs> Very true, Peggy. Saying, seems there's so many buffaloes, shouldn't we be seeing lions? Well, I would wager the lions are following this herd at some stage. Maybe not right behind, but I think they will be on their tail tonight. That's possibly why I was hearing them last night. So I think we'll carry on uh, as we go down. We're going to go down towards Treehouse Dam and then make a turn around Twin, uh, twin Dams. Mark found some tracks of the leopard going south, obviously from Chelapan, where we were looking this morning. So I'll have another look around Twin Dam. But uh, I think the herd has been around here all day. As I say, we left them walking down towards Treehouse this morning, and they haven't moved very far. So I think the lion should be coming through at some stage. I just can't believe we're still having buffalo coming out of the bush here. <laughs> And again, it's amazing, you can lose this herd. Hi, 
Hi, Sandra. I just like to know, obviously, with these two sparring, is it to teach the youngsters that are still around? Well, I don't think they're doing it to actually teach them. They're actually practicing their own technique. Um, obviously getting used for the day when they really will need to spar for real. But I think the youngsters will definitely be watching and they'll sort of take it in. But as I say, you saw the youngsters actually putting their head together. So I think it's a behaviour that they, they sort of know already. It, it's an innate behaviour that they just have, have this notion to, to try it out and to start playing and headbutting. But uh, definitely the sparring, it, it hones their skills and that's why you'll get uh, young males practicing on each other because they're getting the technique right. Okay. Hi Ulrich, welcome on board this afternoon. I'm hoping you're enjoying the buffalo as much as we are. And you just like to know, will they interbreed with cows? Well, they are part of the bovine family. Um, as far as interbreeding, I don't know if it's ever actually happened. Do you know, has anyone tried to no, I don't, interbreed I don't know. buffalo with cows? I've not heard about it. Um, I think if if it did happen, I think they may produce an infertile offspring. If just like uh, if you uh, interbreed a, a horse and a donkey, they could possibly be close enough to breed, but I don't think they'd produce viable offspring. But I've not heard of it. If any of the viewers have heard of such cro uh, crossbreeding, it'd be quite nice to know. It's quite an interesting one, Ulrich. And as the last few members of the herd are leaving, I wonder if there is any more buffalo questions while we still have some buffalo in sight. Give me a sec. Okay. I think I have heard of American bison being interbred with cows <coughs> and they were trying to get the best of both worlds out. I think the hardiness and the, the beef of the cows. I don't remember that one, but say with African buffalo, I'm not sure. They wanted to make big beef cows. Station Slambia Vignari, if I'm bringing north from Filaments Cut Line. Stations, it's an open lock. Hi Richard, and apparently you're busy there in the chat rooms and uh, you're a new viewer and I hope you're going to be able to join us for some more safaris, hopefully you enjoyed the buffalo there. And uh, for anybody else that's joining us for the first time this afternoon or if you've just tuned in, my name's Tara and you're watching Safari TV and joining me getting some absolutely wonderful shots for you this afternoon which I've been able to uh, have a look on the monitor now 
is Herman. And we also have Afka and Mark in front of control. So if you have any questions, they will be sending them through via radio to me. So if there is anything you'd like to ask, we can answer them while we're driving or while we're watching animals. Anything you'd like to know. And if I don't know, if as you've seen, I can't know everything. It's impossible for somebody to know everything. But uh, if I don't know, then I'll ask the audience. Hopefully we'll be able to get an answer while we are driving. And if anybody isn't sure, this is 100% live. So what we're seeing is what we are seeing in real time. And just waiting for your okay. Hello, Umgo. <laughs> I must admit, I'd love to have come down. If I'd have realised it was still down here, I would have come down. I thought we were actually seeing the tail end of the herd. I wonder how. Uh, the resident hippo here, Hungo, took to it. Okay. Have a quick look at Humgo, our resident male hippo here at Treehouse Dam. Well, he's distorting the reflection there of the tree. And if we could just have that through again, Afka, you're breaking up a little bit. I'd just like to say happy birthday to Terry. Apparently you're celebrating your birthday also today, so a very big happy birthday from Humgo here and myself. I'm sure Herman behind camera. If <laughs> he's gonna remember he's got a microphone. And I can't well they won't hear me. Okay. He doesn't have a microphone at the moment. And I'm sure the guys in final control as well. So I hope you're enjoying the buffalo. I'm going to see if we can try and find some lions or leopards for you this afternoon. So I'm going to try and take the route that the herd came through on. Maybe the lions might be tracking them. But it was hard to say which direction I heard the lions last night. Thanks Penny for that information, really appreciated it. And you're just saying you've not heard of uh, buffalo and cows interbreeding, uh, but you have heard of sable and roan antelope. Now that's a new one for me. And I think they're called rabel. I don't know if, they're, if it's been done artificially, uh, with sable and roan being kept in the same enclosure together, or whether it's just happened naturally out in the wild. It uh, sounds quite interesting. But thank you very much, Penny, for that.
And it doesn't look like Hungo is going to try and show us his dominance this afternoon. Johnny, come in, Johnny. We generally get one uh, display from him while we're here. Johnny, 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 Johnny. It doesn't look like he's going to oblige this afternoon. Maybe he's getting used to the vehicles now. It's certainly keeping a close eye, but maybe he uh, exhausted himself after all the buffalo. So, I think we shall continue on and leave Hungo to his own devices. Yes, please. Attention. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yay, I made it. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have read I managed to get stuck in the ruts down there. <clears throat> but we're on all faithful jigger. So all is fine. Okay, I think you're breaking up a little bit there, Afka. We can maybe have that again. Okay, we're still getting a little bit of break up. I'm gonna continue down towards Tree House and hopefully as we get onto Weaver's Nest we should have better a better signal with the radios. So we'll just try that now now. We'll keep a look out for the elephants around here. Any on drive this morning. Had quite a large herd last night. The people are with the uh, with half a trunk. And I can start to feel the chili snap in the air now. anything in the dip there. Okay, should we give it another go? That's it. Thanks, Dave and Teresa. Uh, you're saying that it's the beefalo uh, where they're being artificially inseminated. And I think it's American bison uh, rather than African buffalo. If, uh, if you can uh, just correct me on that one if I am wrong. You're saying I was right, so I think that was the right one. Yeah, okay, that is right. So, beefalo. And apparently they're quite large. Um, because obviously the bison being quite a large uh, bovid and that, that was basically they wanted to take the large bovid with the tasty bovid and put them together and make one large tasty bovid. I don't know what the meat tastes like, I haven't tried it, I don't think I will. But, uh, nevertheless, but as I say, African buffalo, I still haven't heard about it. But I don't know if the offspring of the beefalo 
are able to mate or not. I don't know if they're fertile or not. So we're heading down Weaver's Nest Road onto Gowrie Main. If anybody wants to follow us on the map. We've just been down Tree House, around Tree House Dam on the northern side. Now we're heading on to Gowrie Main as we speak. But what doesn't show up on the maps and what confused me for quite a long time is all these fire 